fair warning, what I'm about to show you is highly addictive. One taste and you are hooked. Intro. Hey guys, Paul here. Uh, recently I had the great fortune to sit in on a, a private lesson with none other than Carl Jacobson, one of my favorite YouTubers, and uh, he instructed the Vets Turn crew uh, for a couple hours on making uh, bottle stoppers. And um, so I've done a few now, really, really enjoy it. And I'm gonna share with you what I've learned. I've, I had done a couple before the class, but I really learned a lot and I'm, I'm using these techniques and products now. And I'm gonna share with you what I've learned. I'm gonna go through kind of step-by-step step the sequence and I'm gonna introduce the uh, couple of products along the way that I think are important to help you uh, produce really high quality bottle stoppers. So. With that, let me get started. Now, the first thing you're going to want to think about is the materials that you're going to use. So there's a lot of different products out there and you can make a choice between using wood or resin or some kind of resin combination, wood and resin or resin and metal. Uh, what I'm going to turn today is actually a combination of resin and metal. In terms of the stopper um, kits, there's a lot of different ones to choose from, you know, Rockler, Woodcraft have them. I used, uh, I ordered a starter kit from Niles Bottle Stopper Company. These things are really nice quality. So this is solid stainless steel uh, with FDA approved stopper material. Uh, this is, you know, maybe for a dollar more than what you might uh, get elsewhere. Uh, these are a really great option. All right, I've got my honeycomb resin blank ready to go. Uh, now these size, the sizes on these vary a little bit, but they're pretty consistent. So this is about uh, an inch and three quarters square by about two and three quarters inches long. Uh, you wouldn't want to go much longer than that because you're going to end up in a situation where there's too much uh, stopper protruding and a wine bottle won't fit in the refrigerator. So uh, I would keep it to around that size or a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to first step is uh, really prep this, really prepping the blank uh, is exactly what you're doing. So I'm just going to lock this into the, to a four jaw chuck, nice and secure. Next couple steps, I'm going to use this Jacobs chuck with an MT2 uh, taper on it. It's just going to mount in the uh, tailstock. Uh, and I, first up, I have a Forstner bit mounted in there. This is a one inch bit. The size is not critical. All I'm going to use that for is to just flatten uh, that uh, surface on the blank. Uh, and just so, it, just so we know that it's going to mount nicely onto the bottle stopper. So I've got that chucked up, ready to go. Now I've got it inserted in. Okay, and I've got it protruding a little bit. So all I'm going to do is plunge that in maybe Oh, an eighth of an inch or so, just to flatten the surface. Just gonna plunge in slowly. Now this drill bit is uh, 7 sixteenths and it's, it came with the starter kit that I got from Niles. And so it's perfectly sized for the threaded inserts that I'm gonna show you in just a little bit. All right, so let me just show you this threaded insert that I'm going to use. Uh, you don't have to use these, but I think it's kind of silly to not use them, actually. Uh, this is what the bottle stopper itself is going to thread into. So we're going to drill a hole and then tap this, uh, press this into place, glue it in, and let that set up. So now you can see that I've got this piece of blue tape on here. That's to mark the depth. So I want to go just a little bit deeper than this threaded insert, leave a little bit of glue uh, space on the bottom. So uh, that is going to be, uh, that'll tell me the perfect depth for a nice repeatable process. And if the chips are clearing nicely like they are here, I'm going to just continue to plunge straight in. If this was if this was wood, you might back out, let the chips clear a little bit, but this, this drill bit has nice deep flutes in it, so those chips are clearing really nicely. All right, and that's, that's as steep as I need to go. I'm gonna just put the standard live center with the cone nose on it, back into the tailstock. 
dab of Gorilla Glue. This is the Gorilla Polyurethane Glue. I don't like using this stuff in general because it gets all over everything and it takes weeks to get off your hand and off your clothes. But for something where you're making a, in this case, metal to resin connection, uh, it's a very good adhesive for that. It's also uh, gap filling, so it will it will really lock that in nicely where it has the uh, the grooves machined in there. So this is a very nice uh, glue product for this particular operation. So I'm just going to put a little dab into the hole. Get it started just a little bit. And then I'm going to put another little dab just on the outside of it. And then I'm going to use the tailstock and the the live center and just slowly pressing that in going just just slightly counter sunk on that just slightly that I slide my fingernail across there and it's not catching at all so that's that is exactly how you want that just pull that blank out and let it sit and uh, and set up ideally you probably want to let that set up overnight you don't want to try and rush this because if you do that, if you spin it up and turn it too soon, you're going to tear the, the glue bond out and this is going to be pretty much worthless. So, Okay, now the next product that I'm going to show you is a total game changer for these things. I've done, you know, bottle stoppers before without this and I can tell you that this was the biggest aha moment for me in Carl's class was learning uh, about these mandrels. So this is a mandrel that is purpose built for turning bottle stoppers and it's uh, it's from Niles uh, as well you know all this stuff is from the Niles bottle stopper company so this particular style of mandrel threads onto your lathe so I've got a one and a quarter inch uh, eight tooth per inch uh, style and so it's going to thread right on there and give a very secure connection so you can turn without support when you need to without any hesitation uh, on this but um, this is really cool. The threading on this is exactly the threading for the insert that we put into the blank. So that is uh, about as sweet as it gets. Now it also has, I'm just going to get this threaded on here. It also has a base on here that is exactly the diameter of the standard bottle stoppers. Uh, whether you get the bottle stoppers from Niles or elsewhere, they're going to have that you know very similar diameter and size. So uh, there are additional discs and spacers that can that you can put on there for larger stoppers if you wanted to do a whiskey bottle stopper, uh, or they sell bottle opener kits that are really cool. Those have different sizes, so they have discs, spacers that you put on there, and basically when you're turning your blank, you're going to turn it so that it comes tapers right down and is an exact flush match up with that base and then you know it's going to exactly fit onto your stopper blank. So, so I've got my mandrel uh, in place. I'm going to spin on this blank that I set up the other day. Lock it on there solidly. And I'm going to put the live center in place. Now your tool of choice on this, most of the turning that I, that I do with resin, I like to use these carbide inserts uh, uh, from Easy Wood and this is the negative rake insert. For resin, to me there's just no better way to get a good quality surface on resin. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it, I'm going to remove a lot of the material just with this traditional um, tool, and this is just a, a roughing tool, but it's ground to a pretty good point. So I can get a decent surface, but I'm really not going for a final surface at all with this. Once I get close to the shape I want, I'm going to pull out that uh, the easy wood uh, with the negative rake and, and really finish it off.
All right, that's getting pretty close to what I'm after. I'm gonna round this out a little bit more, get in there a little bit, and then pull the tailstock back. All right, those super light, high-speed passes just really clean that up. That negative rake scraper just is a delightful tool to use. Okay, I think that, I'm gonna call that good, so I'm gonna switch to sanding mode now. All right, I've got this mesh sandpaper. I love this stuff, and I'm, I've got it soaking wet now, so I'm gonna wet sand this, starting with 120 grit. Real light pressure on there. Well, it's not going to take much because this that that carbide uh, tooling just you know leaves this surface almost finished ready. But you'll see this is actually going to make a big difference in the surface quality. So I'm right now sanding at 1300 RPM. You could go a little bit faster, and I will go faster when I get up into the finer grits. But right now I'm just removing tool marks with the 120 grit soaking wet. This mesh sandpaper, see how it clogs up? It's not really clogging up, it's pushing it through. And I can go easily just wash this off and blast that stuff out of there. But I'm not worried about it. Before you switch grits, you always wanna go in the other direction just to kind of remove any uh, pattern scratching that you have. All right, I'm gonna just work now through, uh, so I started with 120, I'm gonna go 180, 220, 320, 400 and 600 and wet sanding with every grit only takes about 30 seconds per grit from here on out uh, and then we'll be ready for finish. For finish I'm going to just put a few coats of Mylan's friction polish. I love this stuff for spindle projects. It just builds up a nice lustrous finish so quickly uh, and I'm just going to dab a little bit on a paper towel. Get this spinning pretty darn fast. You get up around 2000 RPM, you could go a little faster. But this stuff requires friction to produce heat, which kind of quick cures the finish. All right, that's good. All right, then I'm just gonna thread this onto the stopper itself locks in very securely and that's it all right that's all there is to that uh, this is so fun i hope you give it a try let me know if you have questions also i would strongly encourage you to check out carl jacobson's channel the woodshop tv uh, which you probably already have but Go take a look over there. Carl has also started a channel just for Niles bottle stoppers. So check that out. And he gets into a lot more detail even than we covered here. So let me know if you have questions or let Carl know if you have questions. With that, thanks for watching. Hope you subscribe and come back. And uh, I do a lot of wood turning, a lot of woodworking and DIY stuff here as well. Thanks for watching.